Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 So once again, welcome to church. Let's turn our Bibles quickly to Genesis chapter 16. In verse 1. And this month, we will be talking about the person of Christ. We will be looking and considering the depth of the person of Christ. We will look at the name of Jesus as we look at the person of Christ. But in this particular teaching, we want to focus on something that would inspire, challenge, and build our faith towards the rest of the year. And I'm talking about stop playing God. And what does stop playing God mean? Very often in life, we need to realize that there are two kinds of response when it comes to life. Or two kinds of things. There are things that are within your control. But there are things that are not within your control. And what you must realize is this. The way God has made it. The things that are not within your control... The only way you can manage it is by praying about it. One of the reasons why people get depressed and frustrated easily is that they try to control things without their control. I'll give an example. For example, you look at the economy of Nigeria, for all of us that stay in this country, and you know that there are certain things you cannot control about how the economy is going. What you can control is how you manage your finance, how you respond to it. But if you begin to focus on that, you will sink into depression. You will sink into a place of unjoyfulness. You can determine how you will behave towards someone. You cannot determine how they will behave towards you. Is that not true? You can determine. All you can do is to determine how you behave towards someone. And the reason why most of us get depressed is this. We are hoping we can control how they behave towards us. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. So when people are playing God, what is really happening is this. It's almost as if they're in total control of something. So let's look at a scripture. Genesis chapter 16. And this teaching is just to challenge you. That listen, instead of you to play God, trust God. Listen, trust God. If you do big things... Or if you are doing big things, there will be times in your life that you will know that, you know what? I just have to throw up the towel and say, Lord, I trust you. And when you see people that God has really helped, no matter how they explain their story, there's a gap that they cannot explain. And that gap is what God did that is outside explanation. Because strategic people know how to put plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D. But the best of us, when we eventually hit the target... We will say, although I planned though, there was this almighty formula that came into place. There was this joker card from nowhere. This happened, that happened, that happened, that happened. I, I remember, you know, if you've been into for such a long time, you'll have heard me say that we're going to have conference in London. We're going to have conference in America. We're going to, you'll have heard me say all those things. But I never knew you. This was how it would come. And you know why God does that? Because if God tells you everything, how will you trust him? God wants you to have blind faith in him. So sometimes, you know, sometimes, so you know, I don't know if you've dated someone before and you blindfold them and you say, let me take you somewhere. Why do you blindfold them? You just, it's just in the intrigue. God just wants to let you know, you know, you can trust me. But because we're human beings, we're trying to figure out, is it going to happen this way? Is it going to happen this way? I remember when this facility where I, in the Lekki Church, I remember when the owner of the facility then, now it's our property, came and he told us, how many months did he give us? Was it three months notice? It was three months notice. He came and said, in three months, you have to vacate the property. I was like, where do you find to put a church in three months. Even the funds, we did not have it. <sighs> I remember I spoke to my pastor. And he said something that touched me. He said, you are thinking too hard about these things. I said, I need to. He said, did God know they will give you a quick notice? I said, yes. He said, is this his church? I said, yes. That means if he's not irresponsible. He's planned for the future accommodation. He said, rest in that. 
The reason why we're fretted out because we're human beings. We can't see tomorrow. You know, you must know that there's a human perspective and there's a God's perspective. The best way to explain that, let's go and watch a movie. Let's say there's a new movie now. What's the new movie out in the cinema? What? Glamour Girls. Is it Glamorous? Glamour Girls? Glamour Girls? Yeah. Glamour Girls. So there's Glamour Girls out in the cinema. Let's say I've watched it before. And I'm just going with some other person in church. Maybe Pastor Nee is coming with me. We sit down. And we see, maybe one of the actress or actors wants to do something. Say, no, 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 no. You know why I don't close my eyes? I've seen it before. I know how it will end up. Because I've seen it before. The reason why you're anxious about your future is that you have not seen it before. But God has seen it before. So when God says calm down, he knows why he's telling you calm down. I've seen it before. Ah, all this thing that, hey, 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 I'm getting old. I will not get married. God says calm down, calm down. I've seen it before. All this, hey, 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 I will not have a child. I will not have a child. We've been married for four years. God says calm down. I've seen it before. All this, see where my mates are. I'm still a, I'm still a senior manager in the bank. God says calm down, calm down. I've seen it before. That's why he says say unto the righteous, it is well. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. You need, to, you need to relax in the fact that God has seen it. And the one that sees it says to you, it is well. You may not know how. You may not know when. He will do it again. And, and God knows how to choose unfamiliar path to confuse intelligent people. <laughs> I, I love what someone said. He said, God uses basket to fetch water to discrete buckets. Because if he had used bucket, bucket to say, it's because I'm a bucket. But when he uses basket, basket knows he cannot contain water. Glory to God. Uh, have you not noticed how the people with the biggest testimony are the people you don't think will rise? When you were in school, did you notice that all the people that were big boys from the big homes, all of a sudden they fizzled out. Then the ones that you thought... But nobody, they said growing because God uses the weak things of this world to confound the wise. It tells the wise to be patient, it helps the weak to be strong. Glory to God. I've seen over and over, I've seen over and over and over again. You know, there's a brother in our church, he may be in this service, and if you're here, I'm not going to call you out. He was telling me over, over the week, he said, Pastor, the contract is finally out. And when he said that, I said, thank you. It was a contract in an oil and gas business. It's a hundred million dollars. But that contract, they already approved it two years ago. And something happened, and it took two years of battle to get it back. <laughs> At one time, he said, Pastor, I'm tired, I'm exhausted, and this, and I just said, just keep pushing through. The other day, I was listening to it in during Next Level Prayer. This lady, almost 40 years old, he said, now I'm married. He said, this was my prayer, that I will be married. He said, this was my prayer, that I will be married. And let me just remind you, everybody look up here. Just in case you've forgotten, your current problem is not your biggest problem. You had the biggest problem in the past. If you didn't have one, let me tell you about jam. <laughs> did, did you have a problem called jam? You had one? And you say, God, God, if you can, if you can do this as a child, you fasted. Is it not true? See, have you not noticed? Have you not noticed that what is consistent with life is that there's problem, and what is consistent that God is always giving you a testimony. It, it may not be the way you want it, how you want it, but He's always giving you a testimony. When you know this, you should charge to the rest of the year, knowing that my God is good and is kind to me. He's done it before, He will do it again. There's no one like my God. Can you shout hallelujah? Pastor, look at stand up. Stand. Remember when you had that miscarriage? We almost died. All of us, the pastors, oh, Shagamaya, Bragade. What is he? 
<laughs> all crying. But now, your youngest child is our own. What going on for? Not the only child, the youngest child. Now, they are trying not to have more children because if they go close, boom, baby pops up. But when they lost that one, it was almost as if everything was lost. But this is what I tell you. There's nothing lost that God cannot restore. I know human being says, how? But remember, Job lost everything. And God restored Job. There's nothing lost that God cannot restore. Why don't you stand up? Remember, when that setup happened in the office, and they said they were going to sack you, and when they said they were going to sack him, it turned out to be a double, what? A double promotion. And he said what the devil thought for evil. Because it was a gang up. He said, God turned around for God. You know why I'm sharing this to you? Because at the middle of the year like this, most people become hopeless. They look at what has not happened and they say, is it going to happen? Why looking at what has not happened? Why not look at what has happened? Glory to God. And the reason why people want to help God is this. Because they feel as if God is too slow. In fact, people say things like that. And let me say something to you. Wrong believing will bring you wrong result. Wrong thinking will cause wrong believing. Wrong believing will bring you wrong result. The moment you think your God is slow, that's what you will have. My God is not slow. Did you hear the prayer of the psalmist? He said, make haste. The only reason why I could say make haste is because he knows he can make haste. It should not be in the Bible if God cannot make haste. Don't let it sink in your mind. My own God is not slow. My own God is sharp, sharp. Glory to God. Why? The Bible says it's going to be unto you as you believe. What does that mean? If you believe is slow, then God will come to you slow. Glory to God. Let's read. Genesis chapter 16 verse, verse 1. The Bible says, And Sarah, Abraham's wife, bear him no children. And remember that at this time, God had told Abraham that he was going to have a child. Now, they've been waiting for this for a while. And the reason I'm saying so is that some of you, God has spoken to you about your company. But the approval you need for that banking license hasn't come through. The approval you need for that building license hasn't come through. And you're wondering, but God said this will happen. Some of you, God has given you a word about your company, but the funding you want hasn't come through. The same thing with Abraham. God had told Abraham, you will have a child. Ten years had passed, but he had no child. Because many of us are quick to point at Abraham and say he has no faith. But that's how all of us are. When, when, when God says something and it takes some time, the tendency for us to begin to become weak and doubt is very high. And before you accuse people that they don't have faith, if you don't know their pain, don't accuse them yet. Because when people really go through true pain, it's difficult to have faith. Let's talk about it. When it's difficult, it's easy to say, Jehovah Rapha, my healer. It's when the doctor says, we see cancer. Then I will know if you have faith. If when you can lose all the bank account savings, and you can say, Lord, there's no body and there's no one, but Jehovah Jireh, my provider, is whom I look to. The Bible says this, and, Ab and Sarah's Abraham's bear him no children. And she had an handmaid, and an Egyptian whose name was Hagar. And Sarah, and Sarah said to Hagar, Behold, now shrink from, from having children. I pray they go into my maid. And you know the reason why she was doing this? Because she, let me tell you, you, you need to sit to the scripture and love the scripture. The reason why she was doing this was she was like, mm, Abraham's body will stop walking. Before Abraham's body stop walking, let the seed Go into this lady. Because as human beings, the tendency is always to want to help God. Because in our mind, God can come late. But God doesn't come late. He comes right on time. Mary and Martha said, if you had been here, my brother would have not died. Jesus Christ said, you are confused. I don't come late. I come right on time. Now that I'm here, it's the right time. Now he's the appointed time. 
Sarah was playing the fast one. He says, mm, you know, you know, just before, <laughs> because I can tell that Abraham is getting weaker. He's getting weaker. Me, my own body is gone already. Abraham is getting weaker and weaker before the body stops producing semen and they can't have a child. Please sleep with this one and see what the Bible says here. The Bible says this, and Sarah said unto Abraham, verse 2, now the Lord has restrained me from bearing. I pray unto you, going to my maid, that I may obtain a child by her. And Abraham hearkened to the voice of Sarah. And Sarah's Abraham's wife took Hagar and made the Egyptian after Abraham had dwelt in the land of Canaan and gave it to Abraham to a husband, Abraham to be wife. And he went to, to Hagar, and Hagar conceived. And when she saw she had conceived, a mistress was despised in her eyes. So, what is this? What is Agai? Agai gave birth to a child called Ishmael. Now, I don't have the time to go into, the, into Galatians to explain it to you. But the Bible speaks of two kinds of children from, a, from Abraham. Bible speaks of Ishmael and Bible speaks of what Isaac. Bible calls the Isaac the child of promise. What's the child of promise? It's the typology of God doing what he said he would do. So, Isaac is an example of the result of God doing what he said he would do. What is Ishmael? Ishmael is a typology of man's effort to achieve what God said he would do. What is Ishmael? Ishmael is man's attempt to produce what God said he would do. But the problem is this. The moment Ishmael is born and Isaac is there, Ishmael begins to attack Isaac. And many of you, instead of you to wait for the production of Isaac, you go into Ishmael. Instead of you to wait for God to do what he would do, you're going to Ishmael. What is Ishmael? Ishmael is man's attempt. Hey, I think God is coming late. Ishmael is man's attempt to do what God is meant to do. What do I mean? There's an opportunity to buy a real estate. You have, and God has given you a clear word that this year will have a real estate. And you've saved the money, all you had, you're short of 35 million. And you used to do this at restaurants before. And you said, I'm not born again, I don't do that again. You now walk. But 35 million. You call a large. Two, three. Before you know you get 35 million. Add to it. When you call them, things go on, and you bring it. You come to church, praise the Lord that brought property. We all see the property we don't know is an Ishmael. What is Ishmael? Man's attempt to get what God has promised. Instead of you to wait for the Lord, you began to cut corners. And this is why you'll be surprised. There'll be a Christian that is doing well at work, he'll come under financial pressure. Other people are doing all sorts at work, he will not change books. The day he decides to change book, that month, auditor will come. And the reason why is that Satan has been waiting for you since. This day you try to do it, that is that you don't get pregnant. All that girls do is you don't get pregnant. Ah, you not say God, why? And God say, what did I do? <laughs> and the thing is this. This is the thing. This is the thing. Because I'm saying this to you. It is, it is the man's effort to do what God is meant to do. Ishmael and Isaac. You'll be surprised I in the church of Jesus Christ. How many Ishmael testimonies we are celebrating that God did it? One, one day after NLP, a man came to see me. And one of the government functionaries, he said, Pastor, I want to tell you the truth. I'm born again. How I entered court, I did not know. He said they offered us this position. And they said we should go for a meeting. It was initiation. Before you knew it, we are tied in white wrapper. He said hundreds of us were in white wrapper. They gave us things to carry. He said, Pastor, that's how I carried you. He said, I carried and was praying in tongues. I said, You were <laughs> I said you were in the harbor this house, you were praying in tongues. <laughs> I said, No cause confusion for everybody. He said, I've come here now because what I did, I don't know. I just want to come out. And I asked him, I said, he said, I said, why didn't you step out? He said, Because I thought if I step out, I will lose this position. But let me tell you something. Satan does not give free lunch. What is Ishmael? And, and this is the thing. I'm saying so because we must learn to trust God and trust his process. We must learn to trust God and trust his process. 
Most, most of us want to dodge the process. We must learn to trust God and trust his process. Faithful is he that's promised. He will also do it. So, when do, people, when do people get into the stage where they begin to play God? Number one, when they begin to run out of time. When they begin to what? Run out of time. When people begin to run out of time, like, like Abraham, you begin to see them trying to find ways to cut corners and they want to play God. They want to assist God. And many of you are like that right now. You are in the process. God is too slow. Mm -mm, God is not too slow. He's just on time. Don't assist. Let God do his work. In the rest of the year, you will have to do what you have to do. But God will also have to do what he wants to do. I know you want to migrate. You want to migrate, but don't present fake documents. Don't create problems that will last for the future. Before we know you, we know you as <laughs> Olu Benga John. <laughs> we, we see you now. Your name is Anthony Joshua. He <laughs> said, Pastor, I had to do something to survive. Mm, listen, you're just complicating everything. And you need to realize as a Christian, not all doors are God's doors. Some doors are just distractions. And some doors are just traps. And the wisdom to be able to discern and say, this door is not God's door. I turn away. It's big. Glory to God. When do people play God? Number one, they run out of time. Number two, when they don't understand God's method. Because the Bible says the ways of God are high. The thoughts of God are higher than our thoughts. His ways are higher than what? Our ways. The problem with most people is this. Listen, you must know what your job is. You must know what God's job is. Your job is to pray. How God will answer his pretty prayer is his own job. The reason why we get disappointed is that we pray and specify how we want God to answer him. You say, use my brother the governor. You say, use my cousin the GM. You say, use that one the MD. And God says, I don't want to share the glory. I want to use this person. But you keep saying, no, God, don't use that person. Use this person. Your job is to pray. Let God answer the prayer the way he wants to answer it. That's a good time to clap and say hallelujah. Glory to God. I want a husband, but I can't do someone in my office. Let God answer the prayer anyway. Um, did you hear that? I want a husband, but I can't do someone in my office. My sister, let God answer the prayer anyhow he wants to answer. If it's your office, correct. Not your office, correct. This is why a lot of business people get into trouble. Because when they calculate the money, they say, one, two, three people will give me the money. But that's the thing. God knows how to use people that are not familiar. So that you can look up and say glory to God. The other day, we were just talking about Elijah. Elijah, there was a famine and God was feeding him by the pool. Of, um, by the pool. By a pool. And the bed was ringing water. But the Bible said the pool dried up. And God told Elijah to move to Zarephath. Question. Why did the pool have to dry up? The question is this. If the pool did not dry up, could Elijah's faith move from God to the fact that he was in a good location? He will now begin to say, it was the industry I was in that made me who I am. And he will not remember the place of the grace of God. So the reason why people play God is this. Because they don't understand his method. The same thing with Naaman. What did Naaman say? Naaman said something powerful. Naaman told Elisha, he said, he said, he said um, I thought you would come and lay hands on me. How can he tell me to go and dip in River Jordan, that dirty river, when there are better rivers in, in my city? This, see, the point is this. He was saying, Lord, he was trying to play God. And I'm saying so because a lot of you are trying to play God here. Any small thing is the doctor. Look to God first. You know what I know about Christians? Christians don't look to God for healing until doctors cannot help. Meanwhile, God should be the first person you look for healing and doctors are just a channel. Stop playing God. Stop playing God. It's time to let God have his way. It's time to let God have his way. And the problem with playing God is this. You begin to tamper with God's timing. You begin to tamper with God's process. And many people, it's not as if God doesn't love them, but they've tampered with God's process. The process has been tampered with. The timing has been tampered with. 
I, I mean, do you know that sometimes, I, I don't know if you know this, you can trade in your iPhone to get another iPhone. But when you trade in your iPhone, the first thing you want to ask is that, have you opened this iPhone before? You know why? Because if you are tampered with the iPhone, they will not take the iPhone from you. And this is what I'm saying to you. It's difficult for the manufacturer to work. God, you should not say you've been in the wrong relationship, not being you've said other things, and God is wondering what's going on. So, because now you have Ishmael, eventually your Isaac wife or your Isaac husband shows up. But guess what? You can't have him because you already have Ishmael. Because you've had Ishmael, your Isaac job and contract shows up. But you can't take that. You already have Ishmael. And the Bible says Ishmael will begin to war against Isaac and Isaac will begin to war against Ishmael. Glory to God. It's time to stop playing God and just to trust him. See what the Bible says, Hebrews chapter 10. Let's look at this quickly. Hebrews chapter 10. Someone say hallelujah. Verse 36. Thirty-five to thirty-six. He said, "Cast not away your confidence, which has great recompense of reward, for you have need of patience. That after you've done the see what it says, for you have need of patience. Listen to me. Sometimes you pray. There's nothing wrong. It's not a demon. After you pray, you have need of patience. See, there's nothing wrong. After you pray, you have need of patience. Is this in your Bible?" Not every time there's a delay, is a demon. Sometimes, he says, for you have need of patience. Some people are putting themselves under, under unnecessary pressure. He says, you have need of patience after you've done the will of God that you may receive the promise. Listen to me. He didn't say the patience will make God do it. He said patience will enable you to be able to receive the promise. What is patience? Being consistently constant. That means day in, day out. I'm holding on to God's word. I'm believing what God is saying. I'm not changing my mind. I keep saying the same thing. I keep saying the same thing. I keep there. I show up in the office. I show up applying. I'm not giving up. And so I said, why do you do that? Because after you've done the will of God, you need patience. This is a part we don't want to hear. The reason why is that we get distracted by what is happening in other people's life. We can't be patient with us. After you've done the will of God, you need patience. Hallelujah. Psalm 46, verse 10. Someone say, Hallelujah. After you've done the will of God, you need patience. And this is how you begin to put your trust in God and stop playing God. How do you do it? He said, be still and know that I am the Lord. What does that mean? When you are in a state of anxiety, you can never see it. He said, if you are going to sense God, you must come to a place on the inside where you are still and you know I am the Lord. The first thing you want to do is this. If you want to begin to let God have his way and stop playing God, is to admit and believe that God has ways that are higher and different than your own ways. So, it's to begin to say, you know what? I thought it could happen this way, but God can use this way. Any way God uses, I'm open. 
I'm not going to be insisting and say, God, this is the way. No. Any way God does it, I'm open. But still, I know that I am the Lord. It's so acknowledge that. I might think my blessing will come from Jerusalem, but if it comes from Samaria, I'm open. I was, I was sharing this in the first service. A lady, she was praying for a job and, you know, something happened. She didn't get the job and she was praying with Brother Bill Winston and Bill Winston saw her some weeks later and said that, oh, how are you, lady? And she said, I'm good. He said, what about the job you're praying for? And he said, oh, well, I didn't get it. And Bill said, no, 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 no. I said, we didn't get it. God is faithful. Let's join our hands together and pray about that again. And they joined us together and prayed about the job just in Thanksgiving. And when they did that, Bill Winston just said something like, Keep the switch of faith on. Just keep your faith alive. And she went away. Two weeks after, she got a call to resume that job again. And when she resumed, what she found out was this. The person that was on that seat, that got the job, had gotten a better offer and accepted it and was transferred there. And she was not pulled there. See, she thought she would come to job directly. God had another plan. Maybe that other person was also praying. And God needed to rearrange everything because it's like a chess game. What you don't know is that there are many intricacies when it comes to your prayer request. And what seems like slow is God just working it out according to his perfect will. Because remember, you're not the only one praying. Oh. I hope you know that. You're not the only one praying. So, what you are praying for, you are praying for a role somewhere. But that role, there's another born again person there. So, God wants to put you there. So, you know what you will do? You will begin to touch this Christian. To begin to pray for something else. This Christian will not start praying for something else. He has to look for the space in another person's office. And so, once you think that is slow, meanwhile, God is moving this person here, taking him there to create vacancy for you. But you are in prayer, you have lost hope and faith already. Prayer is answered, vacancy has come, you have lost faith. And you now say, God, answer your prayer. God answered, and that's why he says that you have need of patience that you may receive. Why? The angel that brings answers will come, but will you still be waiting in prayer? Now, did you hear what I said? The angels that will bring answers will come, but will you still be waiting in prayer? And what is patient? Being consistently constant. The second thing you have to do, not to, you know, the second thing you have to do is this. So the first thing is to admit and believe that God has a higher way of plan. So Lord, I may not understand there are things I'm praying about I may not understand, but I trust you. The second thing is this. Do the word of God, even when you don't understand. Because the Bible says the one that does the word builds upon the rock. Even when you don't understand, do the word of God. The third thing is this. <laughs> the third thing is this. Be still. What's be still? Don't allow what goes on on the outside to destroy your faith. And that's where we have problem. Problem in social media. Some years ago, I had a, a pastor friend. I'm a pastor, a pastor friend. The testimony guy was sharing was affecting me. He was into, and me, I'm telling you, he's my friend. I called him. I said, how are you, my boy? I said, I want to unfollow you. He said, why? I said, you didn't offend me. I'm just affected. When I'm okay, I'll follow you again. So that when he sees me on follow, he doesn't think that it's something private. Because there's a way was sharing testimony that made me feel as if God was not answering me. And I know if that feeling enters my heart, it will affect my prayer life. Many of you, that's what has affected you right now. You really think that God is kind to your brother or your sister more than you. And God does not have preference. He says, with God, there's no respect of person. And the reason, you must know, <laughs> these things are very powerful. Oh. You will just go online, you'll be going online, you'll just be watching their page, watching their page, watching their page, watching their page. As you're watching their page, something's happening to you. You will just finish social media and feel like, safe. ah, ah, and I do an LP. <laughs> you will just be wondering, where did it come from? Things you were watching. I, I, I told my friend, when it was time, I followed him back. I, but that time I followed him back, there was nothing in my heart again. Are you hearing me, people? There are friends that you go and see them and you say, just give me some time, let me work on myself. Because they should be challenging you, but now the testimony of God challenge is now intimidating. Glory. 
Glory to God. And I know what that means because it's in different faces. Glory to God. And what did he say? He said, be still and know that I am the Lord. See, there's a way you must know on the inside. But that knowledge comes from a place of stillness. The next thing is this. Stay joyful. This is how you're going to enjoy the process. Stay joyful. See, stay joyful. No matter what happens, stay joyful. No matter what happens, stay joyful. Why? The book of Jeremiah says that, it says it's with joy. We will draw waters out of the world of salvation. So I'm waiting for that contract, I will be joyful. They get the contract to somebody else, I will be joyful. The reason why is that if the devil cannot take your joy, he cannot keep your stuff. I don't know why the pregnancy is taking five years, I will stay joyful. You know why? Once you say joyful, it means the switch of faith is on. If you stay sad, you will create an atmosphere for demons to come in. Stay joyful. Joyfulness is the atmosphere of heaven. Once you say joyful, angels will be parabolating your corridors. You say joyful. Ah, you, 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 on your birthday, you are celebrating 88 years, and they say you are still single. And someone say, you see, that's it. You say, Father, I thank you that I'm living a life. I'm staying joyful. They are doing a random promotion. Everybody got a letter of increase and yours is there. You will say, Father, thank you. Because you've done it for them, you will not forget me. You will also do my own. Stay joyful. How do you stay joyful? You must understand joy is an inner force. That's why he says the joy of the Lord is your strength. Once you stay in joy, there will be strength to fight. But once your joy is gone, you will lose the battle. Oh my God. The reason you lose the battle is not because you don't have strength. It's because joy has gone. Once you stay joyful, what will happen? There will be strength. So if you find yourself depressed, joy is missing. If you find that you are inconsistent, you're just weak, joy is missing. If you can find and keep your joy, you will have breakthrough. Because joy is what gives you the pushing power. Every woman that wants to deliver knows at the moment of delivery, there's need to push. And that's when you exert energy. What helps you push is strength. And that strength is the work of joy. So most Christians are not able to push the next phase because joy is missing. And that's all of you that serve in the house of God. Do it joyfully. If you don't do it joyfully, you will face out with time. You must enjoy it. When you pray, pray joyfully. Don't say, when I say stand for prayer, say, okay. no, no, no. Joyfully. When it's time to come to your joy, it's a training that the joy of the Lord is. I do this thing joyfully. When it's time to give, your thanks and the offering. Don't say, it's time. okay, okay. No, do it joyfully. Why? It's joy that produces strength. And the last thing is this. When you do it joyfully, wow. Trust in the faithfulness of God through your process. In Hebrews 11 verse 6. Very powerful. In Hebrews 11 verse 6. There's the last thing. Trust in the Lord through the process. In Hebrews 11 verse 6. Can you put it on the screen? The Bible says this. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that must come to God must believe. Fundamental. That he is. And he is a rewarder. Of them that diligently seek him. He said, this is where your faith starts from. That God will not fail. He has not failed anybody before. He will not start from me. He is the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. He did it for Isaac. He did it for Abraham. He did it for Jacob. He will do my own also. He said he is what a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I'm going to consider and judge him faithful. That what he has said he will do, sir. Oh my God. That what he has said he will do. No wonder the psalmist said forever, O oh Lord. Thy word is settled in heaven. He said once I've thus spoken. He said twice have I heard the voice that the power belongs unto the Lord. He said the word of God is tried and trusted. He said it will not fail. He says heaven and earth may pass away, but the word I speak will not pass away. Hallelujah, somebody. 
I understand that there is delay but I believe that it shall be as it was told me I believe that what God has said will come to pass what God has said will happen what God has said will not fail let heaven pass away let it pass away it will be as God has told me he says if thou will this believe you will see the glory of the Lord I don't know what's going on in Nigeria I don't know what's going on in your business but what God has said to you judge him faithful he said faithful is he that promise he will also do it he said faithful is he that promise he will also do it is the author and the finisher of our faith is the first and the last he says it this way he said the Lord will perfect all he didn't say stop he said the Lord will perfect all that concerns you Philippians chapter 1 verse 6 being confident of this very faith that he that's begun the good work in you he that's begun the good work in your family he that's begun the good work in your career can I tell you something God is not a Nigerian contractor that does abandon projects no sir if he starts it he will finish it because before he started he has finished he only starts what he has finished what has he said about your future what has he said about your children what has he said about your job he said i've said it i will do it i'm the one that called a man from the far east to perform his cancer if there is no man he will call a man from the far east to perform his cancer shout i receive it Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled. Sarah thought he will fail. He never failed. Isaac thought he will fail. He never failed. Jacob thought he will fail. He never failed. Joseph thought he has failed. I should be a prime minister. I'm a prisoner. He never failed. He has never failed before. He will not start from you. He said, I'm the God of all flesh. Is there anything too difficult? He said, I'm the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Jesus got to marry and matter. And they said, sir, if you have been here on time, you will have not died. He said, I'm here on time. I am the resurrection and I am the life. Stand on your feet. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 